So let's say we're at a point where we've written our article. It's pretty much ready to go. Again, what you write is up to you, and based on what we've talked about previous days of, a, of the amount of how much to write and its publication frequency. At the very top right corner, we have the little publish box, and there's a variety of things we can select from here. I have not published it yet, so its status is still draft. Once I publish it, anyone could see it that comes to my website, or in theory, anyone can find it if they do a search. If I don't want that to no longer be View, viewable by people or findable by the search engines, I can set a previously published article back to draft mode. Let me just show you what I mean. If I have some other article I've already published, I can hide it from the world within this little box here by setting it back to draft. Here I haven't even made it public yet, so that doesn't, that doesn't matter. We have visibility, if you edit that. Is it, is it public, is it password protected, or is it private? Now public would be that if anyone visits my site and they poke around on my site, they should be able to find this article. Private is, they shouldn't be able to get to this article unless they have the link. It won't really be very visible on the site, but if you have, for example, an email distribution list, and you send out emails to your followers with a link to this article, and you know there's the link to this article, then people will be able to see it. It's just that people will not see this article directly by browsing your site. It still will exist. The search engines could possibly find it. Someone has that link and they share it to 40 other people, well, 40 more people found it. So private just is one possible way to limit the audience. The other possible way is to password protect it. You put in whatever password you make up here, someone could find the article, but then it'll say, enter the password to read the article. I believe it shows them at least the title of the article, but nothing else. And this is not the best system, really, for protecting your content. This is not really the system you use to write articles that you sell, because then that password if then anyone shares that password, they have access. There's no way to determine who has read your article and lock out some people and allow other people and to have like a limitation of how many people to see it. This is not really designed for that. It's very limited. But in order for you to add more of these features, depending on the version of WordPress you have, if you have the ability to add plugins, we don't, if you have plugins, there are plenty of other plugins which are extra little apps to give you more features, and one of them would be a better password system for your articles. Public, as I said, anyone can find it. Now the default of WordPress is you publish an article and it pushes the old article down. You publish a new article and it pushes both of those further down. You see how this article has pushed down that article and so forth, push down that article. That's the default. Well, if I constantly want this article to be the very first article that people see, that's what that option of stick this post to the front page means. That's known as a sticky post. I've stuck it at the very top. It's the first thing people see. Great uses for this are like a frequently asked questions post. If I'm selling some nutritional supplement and people constantly ask me, what is the caloric value of it and its sugar content? Instead of answering it over and over, I write this post, answering that and calling it frequently asked questions, and then I stick it to the front. That's the first thing people will see, and people will still not see it and still ask you. But at least, possibly, it'll help us to prevent you know, repetition. You can stick more than one thing. That kind of defeats, defeats the purpose. And what will happen is that they will then be stuck in date order. So if I've st stuck three things on the home page, they will be in the order of publication. WordPress is very cool in that every time I make a change and I either publish it or save as draft, it remembers that. And there are revision histories here being saved. 
and it will save every change you've made even a year later. So if you wanted to get back to how did I have this version of this article a year ago, you can click Browse. You don't have to do it, but I'll show you. And it'll show you here, the very last time, this is what was written, and this is the latest version of it. I deleted, an, I deleted a space on the previous version. Or oh, it's backwards. This, will, this is what was not there on the previous version. This is what currently is there, a space. This is what was not there, the previous version. Now, there's this version plus these links. This is what's been added. That's what was not existent on the previous version. The rightmost one is the most recent version. This was the most recent version on the right side of what I wrote. This is the second most recent. At the top, I can go back one more step. So now this one has, this is what had been added here and what was either not on the left or removed. I had some gibberish, which then I replaced with some real content. I had conclusion, but then I added a heading 2 to it. And I go all the way back to the first version, which was there was nothing there, and you started to write it. Well, not only can you see what you've done, you say, well, I, I want to start over from my first idea. It was better than what I have now. You can restore the version. And so what is on this screen, on the right column, is what will come back. Oh, sorry, I think it's backwards. What is on the left column is what will come back. This is the newest version, so I want to go back to a previous version. Therefore, if I go over here, there's that version that I want to restore before all of this stuff, so I would restore that. Because on the newest state, this is what I've written the most. There's nothing to restore. When I go back, I can restore it. publish immediately. As soon as I hit publish, whatever date and time it currently is, or when I started to write the article, that's what will be listed here. July 29th at 1900 hours. So my time zone is wrong. Uh, but the point of this is this is how I can save my sanity and not be chained to my computer. I've made the goal that every month I'm gonna write 100 words. And so I've got plenty of things to do, and I'm going to forget to do that unless I give myself calendar reminders and all of that. Well, again, to save your sanity, you can write, you can spend one Friday afternoon or something and write a bunch of articles and then have them scheduled to automatically be published in the future. So let's say this is actually next month's article. I can easily set this then to August 20th. at 1 p.m. I'm sorry, that's 1 a.m. at 1 p.m. 24 hour time. Click OK and when I click publish that'll be scheduled. So I may have a thousand words in my head. That could be two to ten articles. I could publish 500 words of the 1,000 this month and 500 words next month. So I schedule it for next month. I could parse it down to 200 words. I have 1,000 words, but I'm going to break it down to 200 words at a time. I'm going to serialize it. 200 words this month, 200 words next month. And within my, own, within my own article, then I could click at the bottom. doesn't really happen automatically. I can click read the next chapter, read the previous chapter. In the article itself, I can do that. WordPress will automatically be placing the articles in a sequence, of course, in the date sequence. But if I further want to, within the article, guide people to the different chapters, I could do that. That's something I highly recommend you think about, serializing your content. Don't write all 1,000 words at once. You've got at least two articles in that 1,000 words. Some of the classic stories were serialized. I believe, for example, Charles Dickens' A, a, a Christmas Carol. Is it A Christmas Carol or A Christmas Story? A Christmas Carol. A Christmas Carol. That one was published every week. 
a, a couple of paragraphs every week and then eventually collect it into a big book. You could do the same. You could publish a little bit at a time to get people to keep coming back to your site. They read that one article, great, what else are you going to show me next month, next week? I have to think of what to write. Well, serialize it. And then this says, in my case, publicize, not connected. Publicize is the ability for me to also help me uh, market or advertise my article. In the section, in part three of that handout, there's the part about promotion. Social media for you and social media for them. This is social media for you, meaning you most likely have social media. If you don't, you should have social media. You should have, like, let's say, a LinkedIn profile, or maybe a Facebook, or maybe a Twitter. And you should be sharing your articles there to your friends and followers. Maybe you've only got two connections on LinkedIn. But what if one of those people on LinkedIn really liked your article and shared it to their 50 connections? So now you've reached 52 people, the two you had directly and the 50 friends of friends. So it's very valuable and that's what I'm getting at here from my handout. Social for you. Share your content on your relevant social media. So I'm going to say after or during publication. Share your articles on your social media. Anyone, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, whatever makes sense. With Publicize, WordPress will automatically connect to your LinkedIn and automatically publish it, and automatically put a link and a picture and everything with Publicize. If you don't do via Publicize, that's okay. You can, t you can copy and paste your link of your article, log into your LinkedIn, and paste it there manually. But Publicize is valuable that it, it, it saves you some effort. What addition would a link hold? It should be holding, or how does it work? Depending on the network, some networks, for example, Twitter, cannot show the whole 500 words. So it would show a snippet and a link back to the original one. Something more like LinkedIn, I believe that one can show the whole article. But if not, at the minimum, it's going to show a little bit of a blurb, a picture, and a link back to the original. So that's all of these nuances of publish. We will do so then. Any questions? If this is just testing for the class and it doesn't matter, you can just keep it saved. You don't have to publish it. But I'm going to click publish. And now then, in theory, if anyone would want to see this, you can actually see this if you like. There's my WordPress address. It's kind of gibberish, but if you go to, if you type this address in your browser, test, test, v, 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 dot wordpress com. this is the site I've been working on right now. It is that article I just wrote, and you will see from your perspective this article. Now I'm going to delete it later because it's just testing for the class. But it has been published. It has an address. You have an address. You have content. I'm asking you right now, check out my article. You may or may not. But I have to do some sort of marketing, some sort of advertising to get people to find it. Because just because I made a great website and wrote a great article doesn't mean anyone will find it. Doesn't mean that the search engines will find it. That's when we need to get into the deeper topics of SEO, search engine optimization. I keep saying it over and over. But it is, go take that other class. That other class we go into more detail about how to fully get your content found. We're not done with this class, of course. We'll still be talking about it. But the other class is more detailed. What I'm saying in my handout then, part of the way to help you get found is take advantage of your social media. Maybe the only thing you have is Facebook. That's fine. And you use it to connect with your friends and family. That's fine. There may be one of your family members there that really liked that article. So if I go back 
to my personal Facebook. Here's my article. I go back to my personal Facebook and I copy that address. I can go to my Facebook and paste that link and share it to my 57 friends on Facebook. Maybe 50 of them don't care because it's not a fun, it's not another funny cat picture. But maybe a few of them will care and they can share it to their friends, their connections. Maybe someone of your Facebook friends shares it to their LinkedIn. I don't have a LinkedIn, but then they share it to their LinkedIn and then they have their 100 professional connections and your message, your, your article gets spread to more people that might care. And someone else on that LinkedIn shares it to someone else on LinkedIn. Isn't that what I'm describing? Going viral? Isn't that what everyone wants? That their content gets found by more and more people? It doesn't happen automatically unless you have already have a fan base. So I'm going to take advantage of my social media, whatever I may have, and share this content. This is the order that might matter to you. This is yet another new thing to learn. So I would say here, importance or reach. Facebook, number one. Twitter. Google Plus. LinkedIn. Now, really, the only one I can say number one, however, is Facebook. Everything else can be number two. There is no wrong answer to sharing on social media, but you only, if you only have one, if you only have a limited amount of time and you only want to learn one of them, it's got to be Facebook. Facebook is the largest network. It can reach the more people, the most people, but Facebook is a double-edged sword. It does allow you to reach a lot of people, but in the modern way to use Facebook most effectively, you do have to use the Facebook ad system, advertising the paid Facebook ad system. That's a discussion for the social media class. But in short, for a, for a minimum of one dollar on Facebook, you could easily reach a hundred times the number of people you could reach now. Let's say I have one follower on Facebook. If I pay one dollar, I could reach 100 to 300 people that would have never seen my post before. If I pay $20, I could reach 5,000 people. If I pay $50, I could reach 10,000. It depends on many factors. And just one quick question on that. Um, I can see how it's really good for consumer goods, but for like a business to business, does Facebook allow to find those kind of people? That's, that is a little bit more difficult, but the good thing about Facebook is that it lets you create target audiences so you can craft a target audience exactly like that for business to business within a location within certain interests and help you craft your message to those that would most care so you, it is possible to send yes all the networks nowadays really except google plus have this system of paid ads you can pay on YouTube to get your video seen by more people. You can pay on Twitter to get your tweet seen by more people. Google Plus is the only one that doesn't have this direct system, but Google has their whole system of ad of AdWords to, to reach people all over Google search. But on LinkedIn you can pay to reach more people, Pinterest, all of them, all the big social networks have a way for you to pay some amount of money. It could be as little as a dollar. It could be more effective ten dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars to reach more people. You might bristle at that and say, why would I pay for my tweets to be seen by more people? That's a ripoff. Well, in the real world, you're paying to print five flyers. You're paying to pay fifty to print fifty flyers. You're paying to to print a thousand flyers. You're paying for that five second radio ad. You're paying for that 30 second radio ad. You're paying for that guy on the street flipping that sign. 
So in the real world, you're paying for marketing and advertising somehow. In the digital world, with most networks, you can use them for free, but you also get a lot of efficacy if you pay to use the networks uh, for advertising. I'll write here, consider paid content on social media to reach more people. I don't recall if I mentioned it in this class, but this relates to the topic of um, impressions and conversions. Impressions. People saw your content. Conversions. People interacted with your content. What I mean by that is I wrote this great article and I tweeted about it. And Twitter can give me a screen full of statistics. And Twitter will tell me, you reached 500 people. 500 people saw that tweet. Well, clearly that's not as valuable as 500 people clicking on the tweet to read the article. That's the conversion. Conversions are often much lower than impressions. Facebook can tell you, you've reached a thousand people and 200 clicked. I want all 1,000 of them to click, but it just doesn't work. Even in the real world, those 500 flyers that you put on 500 cars result in two sales. But those two sales were of $1,000 each, so it was probably worth it to pay $200 for 200 flyers. Same thing on Twitter. I paid $10 to reach 1,000 people, and I only sold three things. Well, those $10 resulted in a $50 sale. You have to decide, was that worth it? So it's still going to be about how great your content is. Even if you, if you write a terrible article and you pay Facebook $100, yes, lots of people will see it. But will anyone do anything about it? Will anyone pick up the phone and call you to hire you as that realtor? Will anyone donate to your nonprofit organization? Will anyone book your 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 band at at the wedding? Will anyone read your political article? Will anyone see your paintings? If you don't have good content and it's coming back to content, it doesn't matter how much you pay, it won't really work out for you in the long term. Okay, well, that's work that you need to do about publicizing your own content. And the opposite side of that coin is social for them. Let the people that have come to read your articles, found your articles somehow, let them give them the ability to share to become free advertising for you. On my particular WordPress, I've got an article, and at the end of my article, I have a spot that says share this. We did see this maybe on day one of the class, but I'll show it again where this is at. I want the ability for someone to see my stuff and share it to their LinkedIn, share it to their Twitter, email it to other people. People forget that that's an early form of social networking, emailing. It's not as fancy as these modern ones, but that could be that could help you go viral as well. Someone sees this amazing article, they click on that email button. So I'm going to send it off to my friends, they'll send it to more friends, I get traffic, I get sales, in theory. Depending on your theme, you may have this feature built in. Or, if you're in WordPress, you can go look at Settings, Sharing. If you don't have Settings and Sharing, you can activate it via, via Jetpack. But under sharing here now, okay, here's the spot where I will let people, I'm going to let people tweet this article, 
I'll put it first so to focus on it. Um, let them send it to Skype, etc. WordPress says, okay, we will add this to all your posts and all your pages, whatever you want there, most likely all posts, at least. And so this is the, the, the side of the coin about social for them. Let your users that find your stuff share it to more people for free advertising, free marketing, reaching more people. That'll turn people into free advertisers for you. We, we already have to think about spending real money for advertising. Well, make it easy for other people to, to share for you. If you take the social media class, we go into detail about all the popular networks. Um, this month, I had the social media class part one, and next month I have part two. You don't need to have taken part one to take part two. It's Wednesday nights, 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., and starting next week, next month, we're going to talk about LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. Three big, useful, powerful, and popular networks to help you get the message of your content out to the world. For part one, we talked about Twitter, Google+, and Facebook. We often also cover Pinterest. One network per day. Because honestly, I could teach Twitter two months in a row. I could teach YouTube two months in a row, you know, three times a, a month or four, whatever. Each of those networks, we can go into such detail for each of those networks. But I do an overview of all of the networks for you to decide which is the best one for you. Where is your audience? What are you most comfortable doing? With doing? You might have heard YouTube. YouTube is the number one thing you got to get on. YouTube requires a lot of investment in that you have to make videos. You can't share anything on YouTube really except videos. So if I'm not going to spend the time to learn or I can't, don't have the time to learn how to make videos, YouTube might not be the best one. But if you take the class, we'll see how to manage YouTube next month. So you're adding videos to here. You can do it through the premium plan. What is this video? Um, exactly. Video exactly, video press. With the WordPress.com, because videos take up a lot of space, they want you to go to the upgraded version. If you get your own WordPress site on your own server, like GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc., then there's no limitation. Well, not for free. Right, but is it so? It's worth it. My question is kind of: Is it worth it to try to do it that way? Um, you can still go around it. You, you even with the free one here. If you upload your videos directly to YouTube, just link those YouTube videos to your WordPress. That's how you go around paying for the video press. Video press is that you upload your video to your site here on WordPress, but you have to pay for that. So you might as well go get a YouTube, a free YouTube account, just link your video on your page, and go around that for free. Why don't you install Jetpack onto your you don't install Word. You don't install Jetpack if you've got WordPress.com. It's built in. If you go get an account over on GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc., you will see a link over here that says Plugins. Uh -huh. We don't have plugins; they're already built in. Okay. So it's, under plugins. it's under Plugins, and you go Add New Plugin, Jetpack, and then you'll have those features. Okay, so you've written something great. I have an item here about comments. We started to think about sharing our stuff on social media or letting users share. Well, then we've got comments. If you do look at my article, it lets the user at the bottom add their two cents, leave a reply.
So comments could be valuable. This could show the search engines that your site has activity. If you and your competitor have similar sites, different content, one of the ways that the search engines can rank you higher is if you have a, an active or a vibrant community of people that are commenting on your stuff, on your articles. This is showing the search engines, this site is more valuable than that site because people care, people comment, people reply. We saw that we were when we were writing an article, if I go back to edit my article, we saw that there was a box, discussion. Allow people to comment yes or no per article, per article basis. Don't worry about trackbacks and pingbacks. That's related to backlinks. You, you want it on, and it should be on by default. But as for comments, you have to decide if you want comments or not. Now, I just said comments could be valuable, so you want to turn it on, perhaps. But the reason why I'm hesitant is because then now you have to deal with spammers. If there's a spot here for someone to write, spammers have this software, these, these apps, these, these robots, that browse all over the internet looking around for websites, looking around for a website where it says leave a reply, add a comment, some sort of box. And all behind the scenes this is code. Behind the scenes I can find that there's a bit of code that says input. So I can program a robot to look for a website that says something about input type text. Input type email. I can program a uh, a robot to look for this, and therefore, I can send my spam bots, spam spam bots out there to comment on people's sites, to infest them with links back to my site, or to trick people into clicking what I've written to come back to my site to buy my product. So that's another double-edged sword there. Comments could be valuable because they'll show the search engines you have an active site. But by default, any crazy person or any spam bot can write any crazy thing on your site unless you approve it, which I'll show you here in a moment. But as for our note here, I'll write consider activating comments on your posts but also activate comment moderation. Comment moderation is exactly that. Nothing will show up, no spam will show up until you approve it. And actually on WordPress.com there is already a built-in system of spam prevention that is working. If you are not on WordPress.com, Jetpack, once again, gives you all of these great features such as spam fighting. And so we're on WordPress.com. I do want comments. If I turn that off, no comments will come through. I do want comments, but I want to moderate them. And we talked about this on the first day, but it, it's good to bring it back again. If we go look at inside of our um, dashboard, settings, discussion. Under settings and discussion, there's a little section right here. Before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. That one is off by default. Meaning, in theory, any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your site, or any spammer can write any spam links on your site. My recommendation is to switch these two around here. Activate must be manually approved, and deactivate must have previously approved comment. The way it's currently set up is there is a built-in there is a built-in approval system which is okay. And so if someone wrote something and it got approved and it shows up on the page, 
then they will have a little bit more leniency for them to write something else later. Because now it says, if someone's already written something and it's been approved, let them write something later. No problem. The problem with that is that spammers are getting so smart. Spammers used to simply try to write 10 links on your comments and then move on. Okay, that doesn't work anymore. That pattern is, is easily discerned. Then they started to write just a bunch of words from the dictionary plus links. Well, that doesn't work anymore for them because it's not meaningful words. So then now they're getting so smart that what they're doing is spammers are often writing a very generic complimentary message on your site to trick you into thinking, oh, this is a real person. They said they found my site and they really like it. Approve. Well, we've just opened the door to the spammer because the next second and 50 messages will be spam because I got tricked into approving one positive sounding message. But what the spammers are doing is they're using that one generic positive message and spreading it out to 50 sites. Every single site could apply to this. Every single site could be, I found your site and it's one of the best ones. I found your site and it really has the information I needed. Great article, I can't wait to read more. That applies to every site in the world. But it sounds positive enough to trick some of us into approving that comment from the spammer, and now we've let them in. Well, my recommendation, turn on the first one. Every comment will be approved. None of them automatically. Yes, this is more work. I will now be getting emails when something is waiting to be approved every single time. And I've got enough to do with running my business and doing payroll and everything, do I want to also add to myself comment moderation? At the very least, I'll get an email, and right from my inbox, I can select Approve, Deny, Spam. And right from my email, I can click Spam, and it's gone. Or Approve, and it shows up. Or Deny, which would be like, uh, it's not a spam comment, but I don't want it to show up because it's off topic, or it's mean, or whatever, it's my content, it's my website, I'll moderate it how I want. If you don't want to deal with any of this common moderation at all, at the top we have, just don't allow people to comment on anything. And so as my note here says, comments I believe are in a transition phase. Allowing comments could help generate more traffic but, but moderate it. And we've done this in our company for a client or two where we say, okay, we can activate comments, but you need to be up to date on that and reprove them or not. You did not hire us to further moderate your comments. We could, but we're going to charge you, of course. It's a business. So they say, no, no, no we, we'll do it ourselves. We're going we're gonna to be on top of it. We'll do it ourselves. And they don't. They're not on top of it. And then they get spam links. And their site loses quality because the search engine will see this. Why is this site full of spam links? It must be a spam site. It decreases in ranking. Lastly, another way to promote your content, and I mentioned this previously, previous day, first day, was what about if you write guest articles for some other site? What if you go to some other tech site and say and contact the webmasters there on the on the web on the contact screen and say I would like to offer my services to write for you. It's up to you and them completely to set up the terms. Are you going to write one article for them and they'll write one article for you? Will you write one for them, they'll write two for you. Will you write one article for them and they'll pay you? Will you write an article and they will give you two backlinks? So it's completely up to you about what kind of deal you have being a guest blogger. This is obviously much more work. You're already busy running your business. Do you really want to do this? But this could be very valuable. Networking with other websites regarding the same topics to help cross-pollinate, to help spread your business to other companies. The best example here is if I go look at InvestorJunkie.com or many other sites where an article is written and the, the, the author gets a byline. So I'm going to look here. Is gold really money? This is written by 
Larry Ludwig. So Larry has his own little profile here with links to his own to his own articles. Right here, Kevin Mercadante wrote this, and whatever agreement he has, he writes here, but then he's got here links to his own stuff, out of your rut.com, Google profile, his Twitter. So in exchange for writing an article or two or whatever here, he gets traffic from this larger website that already has traffic. So for yourself, you could have you could contact some other website related to what you write make up some sort of deal, obviously, hopefully get it in writing, because a because a verbal contract is worth the paper it's written on. And once you've got that, and uh, that could help get traffic back to your site. Let's see. It should be when you when you hover over users, you should see my profile. And then you can fill in all your info there about your links and such. So you see here in all of the times that we've that we've met and talked, and in theory and in practice, there's a lot. There's a lot to this, so there's a lot to this writing. And then some of us might be here for certain reasons to increase the overall SEO ranking of our site. Some of us may be here to learn techniques and ideas about blogging and how it can be effective for you and profitable and such. So really it all comes back down to your content. We spent a lot of time on content creation. That's why I have that book recommendation in the, in the syllabus, uh, How to Blog for Profit Without Losing Your Soul. You know, what else can you do to make money off of your blog? Because if you go through the process of Amazon affiliate links or Google affiliate links, that's how you could be profiting. Once there are ads and such on your articles, that could then result in people, in you making money from your blogging. But it all comes back down to content. Without good content, who's going to read it, who's going to share it, how, how will you profit? So as we get to the end of the day, we'll take some general questions, have a little bit of lab time, and then we'll do a little wrap-up. So any general questions on things we've talked about today or previous days? All right, so I'm going to put all of the notes that I wrote here into the network folder. And... I'll turn the printer on in just a bit. You can print those if you'd like, or email them to yourselves. We've covered a lot about blogging, and it's then going to fall onto you to then start to apply it and try it and see how it works. I am available via email for questions and such. And so as we wrap up the class, thank you for, for attending and hope to see you in a future class.